Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today we are going back underwater. Not only are we going underwater, we're going to talk swim baits. We're going to watch how bass eat swim baits because springtime is coming, giant pre-spawn bass are coming, and we want you to be prepared. Let's go watch these fish. It may still be the middle of winter right now, but spring shows up so quickly. In parts of the south, it's already here. For us, it's a matter of weeks before we wake up one day and the bass are suddenly migrating back into the shallows. It just happens overnight. When those spring rains start, it just goes and goes and goes. So it's coming really, really soon. The swim bait bite, the pre-spawn, big bass moving up to feed before they spawn, it is right around the corner. So we wanna get you thinking about that pre-spawn and how to target these fish with big swim baits. If it's not something that you've done, you have been missing the boat. It's not the end all be all of catching big fish, big soft baits, big hard baits. It's not the only way, but man, it is a really effective way to catch those fish. But there are some mistakes that you can make. And that's really what this underwater footage is about. We've talked in the past about how to throw these baits, where to throw them. You know, soft baits, they rely on realism. You're typically fishing slower along the bottom. That bait's just kicking along and those fish just come in and eat that thing. It relies on realism. They are fooled by the presentation. There's not a lot of hardware. It's a great looking profile, great paint, great action, and they just commit and eat it. Hard baits, on the other hand, there's all sorts of hardware. There's all sorts of tells, if you will, that say this is not real. But giant fish still eat it because of their ability to kick and to move and to trigger a core reaction response inside of the fish. So both have great applications in spring and we've gone really in depth on both in the past. Today what I want to focus on is the subtle things that you can do that will make all the difference. The biggest thing I want you focused on as we go to spring, I want you to think about this for the next month because when it gets here and you go out and do this and the biggest bass of your life bites that bait, we don't want you to miss the opportunity. So here is the deal. When you go out and throw a swim bait, sometimes you're fishing that bait and you just get your arm crushed. They hit it so hard, especially with spotted bass. Spotted bass are just known for freight training that thing. Sometimes with a large mouth too. Typically if they hit really, really hard, it's because the bait is coming and they come at it head first. So this bait's coming this way, fish is coming the other way, and they collide, and it's just bone jarring. Those bites are easy. Anybody, a little kid, would know what that was. They would know they got bit. That's not the problem. The problem is all the other bites. Let's talk about the, the soft bait first, then we'll go to the hard bait, because the hard bait is the really interesting stuff. The soft bait. If you get a great big hard strike, it's almost always a smaller bass. They come in, they see that bait, they study it, and then they try and crush it to the bottom. They actually pin it because they know that they're not big enough to fully engulf it. So they smash that thing and then they try and eat it. That's why it's a hard hit. The vast majority of swim bait bites on a soft bait and all of the bites that you're really interested in You'll be reeling along, whether it's in the middle of the column going faster, or again, down on the bottom, just creeping. That bite, when it happens, if you can watch underwater, which you can, it looks like they massacre that thing. But what you feel above water is a tick. That's it, tick. It feels like a jig bite. That's it. The reason why is those bigger fish don't typically smash the bait. They come in fast and then they actually inhale and the bait comes to them. If they're a big enough fish, the entire bait will collapse, disappear in their mouth, and all that will happen is their line, their mouth 
will close on the line. Tick. That's what you feel. That's why it feels like a jig bite. All you feel is the lips close on the line. They never even impact the bait. The medium sized fish will come in, suck the bait to them, and it's still, it's not that ultra subtle tick, but it's still just a, they just clamp onto it. And that's it. So the biggest mistake that you can make this spring is not setting the hook when you get bit. It seems simple, but I did it. I did it for years because there was no YouTube. There were no forums. There was nobody helping me understand how to swim bait effectively. Nobody wanted to give up the truth. The handful of guys that knew weren't talking. I was throwing that bait thinking I was gonna get my arm ripped off and I'd feel a little bump here or a little bump there. I had no idea that those were giant bass. I'd feel a little bump when they'd suck it in and I'd feel a little bump when they'd spit it out. And I'd keep on reeling, none the wiser. Don't let that happen to you. Now hard baits are a little different scenario. If they eat it head first, it's going to be a hard hit. But most of the time, what these fish do, watch this footage, these fish come up, they get riled up. You can see it in their behavior. They want to strike that bait but it's not just this crazy freight train. They come in hot, they position, and they, they just latch on. It's really interesting. Even those big fish, they've got so much control. They come in in position, they wait for that moment, and they latch onto it. A lot of them literally latch onto the hook. They're just looking for the place because that fish is up in the middle of the water column. It's not down low. They can't pin it against a rock or a dock or the shore. It's mid column. So they're just trying to get control of it. And they come up and the one thing that's hanging low is a hook. I guess they think it's the fins perhaps and they latch right on. Some of them eat the whole thing, but because it is a hard bait, it can't fold. It won't fold and go all the way in their mouth. So most of them will either end up T-boned, hook in both corners, or they'll just catch one hook and they'll just latch onto that one and the bait's on the outside of the mouth. This is where hooks and equipment becomes critical. Because these fish are latching onto the hook and they're not vacuuming up the whole bait. The soft bait, it's gone. As long as you can set the hook hard enough, you've got them hooked. But the hard bait is just catching, catching in the corner, catching on the lip. You've got to have ultra sharp hooks because in some cases you'll be fishing that glide bait in this case the s waiver you give that bait those twitches to get that reaction that fish eats that thing on slack line they eat it and they spit it back out and you weren't even part of it you might have felt the tick but they're on and off it so quickly because it's in the middle of your twitch you're out of position there's nothing you can do so if you upgrade your hooks Go to ultra stout, ultra sharp hooks. Replace your split rings while you're at it too so that you don't go through all of this, get the bite of a lifetime and then not get the fish. Upgrade your hardware because sometimes you're going to rely on that moment where the fish grabs that hook and tries to get it back out. You're relying on that hook to catch on its own and that's when you draw tight on the fish. It's actually already hooked itself. So gear. That's the other critical factor. Because once you stick these fish, you've got them stuck on the outside of the mouth. They've got that hook in their mouth, but now you've got a great big bass with all this power and all this force with a hook and a bait on the outside and they're thrashing all that weight. It's really important that you have the right gear for the job. You can get away with throwing a swim bait on anything, especially a small swim bait. Small glide baits, we throw them on jig rods sometimes. But if you're going to go to a bigger bait, you need to go to proper gear. This is one of those times where that little bit of sacrifice where you weren't quite committed can really cost you. You go through all the time, all the effort, all the expense of big bait fishing, and then blow it because that fish comes up and shakes that thing. A proper rod, is everything. I love a power handle so that I can really torque on those fish and keep that rod loaded up. That's so important. The rod itself, I use the 966, Tim does too, 
We used to use a 966 just for our glide baits. We used a different rod for our soft baits. More and more, I use that one rod for almost all of it, except the truly giant or truly small baits. Everything in the middle, seven, eight, nine, 10 inch soft and hard baits. I throw them on that one rod with a tranks, with a power handle. When I hook those giant fish, I'm able to grind and grind and grind, keep their head down and force them. If you let them fight you, those fish are too powerful. They will come up and shake that thing out. You have to keep the head down. You have to keep them coming to the boat. Hopefully you've got somebody there with you to net them right away. Because if you get into a game on the side of the boat where they can jump and thrash, it can go awry in a hurry. But guys, the best time of year for those giant fish that are hungry, again, pre-spawn, they want to feed, it's right around the corner. Get your mind right, prepare, and most of all, remember that those little, those little tick bites are your biggest bites. And be prepared to swing on anything that doesn't feel normal when you're out there swim bait fishing this spring. Guys, I hope this video helps you. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, turn on those notifications. And of course, like every video, we'll link all of the gear down in the video description, the baits, upgraded hardware, rod and reel combo, all of that to make it really simple for you. Hope you enjoyed the video and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you.